Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one I'm going to be covering component design, architecture, whatever the technical name for it is, I don't quite know. But basically what it means is instead of having um, very specific scripts that you have to make uh, new like scripts of every time you want to have something different. So for example, if you have like a projectile, um, rather than having like a projectile script for um, a fireball and then a projectile script for a different, you know, spell or a different projectile like an arrow or whatever you want any throwing weapon um what you can do is instead instead of having a script that says you know maybe you have booleans for saying like should apply dot or shouldn't apply dot then you have a boolean for should apply slow yes or no and so on and then having um like all this data that's unnecessary for every type like you only want to have the data on there that's really necessary for its own type and there's two ways of going about this so one is having a base projectile script and then deriving from it so that you can have like unique behavior, which is sometimes the way to go. But for a lot of things, you can just use what's like this component design architecture, which is where you code generic scripts um, that just do a single thing and you can attach them to anything in your game that does that thing uh, and it'll work. So for example, what I'm gonna do is instead of writing a projectile script where it'll say, you know, get the thing that we've hit and if we can damage it, then deal damage and then uh, if deal apply dot is true then apply a dot and if apply slow is yeah well, all we need to do is just care about um separate scripts so like maybe we'll have a script for uh, destroy on hit and then apply dot on hit and so on we'll get into that i want to start by thanking my patrons my donators on patreon so thanks to paul robinson full bomb and wesley for their five dollar donations discord if anyone else is able to help out then the link is in the description below and let's get into it so i've set up a few things simply so well, i've got three scripts and capsule which is the player cube which is the enemy and put the health and shooter none of this code's actually written yet so on the enemy health just like we would normally do you know you'll have a um health so obviously private um int health uh actually we'll go for max health now this is just standard right so you're gonna have to do this uh you're gonna have classes for things that have health and max health so private int health um we need to set the max health but not set the current health and then obviously we'll have a thing to deal damage. So we'll just say uh, public void. I could use an interface here, but that's not what this video is on. I've done that before. Uh, deal damage uh, int value. And we'll just say health minus equals value. This is standard. And then we can obviously say, I could make another function for it, but we'll just do it here. If health is less than or equal to zero, destroy game object. So this is just standard. Um, destroying things that you just want to get rid of when they you know lose all their health so that, that's normal and obviously you would actually want on um, the start method say uh, health is equal to max health so what do we want to do with this well we want to obviously access this from the projectile but if we just have this single projectile script this is showing you what not to do um, let, let's just create this quickly so in the player shooter we'll just have um, an update method and we'll say if uh, input dot get mouse button down if we left click um, then we can just say we need to projectile to fire so uh, game object projectile prefab we can just say oh if we press that button uh, instantiate projectile prefab um, at our transform dot position and then quaternion well, actually, we'll say a uh, transform dot rotation. Okay, um, but let's say game object geo equals. And the reason we'll say that, well, I could say a uh, spawned projectile, right? So we're going to click. We're going to fire the spawn projectile, and maybe we'll say a uh, spawn projectile uh, dot get component rigid body, and we'll just fire it off with um, a force. So dot add force. Um, spawned I would say transform dot right I think is the way I've got it um, multiplied by force comma force mode dot impulse so basically we're going to spawn a projectile fire it off in a direction with um, whatever we set that to okay now this is all this script wants to do okay like the shooter should only care about what it needs to shoot it shouldn't care about like setting damage and passing in stuff maybe you might have something that needs to be passed in from somewhere but as a general thing you know all it needs is the projectile to fire and a force might be five i don't know we'll see so if i just uh yep projectile add rigid body go again maybe get rid of gravity because uh i've not really set this up to 
need gravity. So, oh yeah, if I left click, we fire off the projectile, which actually does stop on there. Now, that's what you expect to happen at the start, I guess. Um, obviously, we're going to start causing some problems there, which is quite amusing. Um, but that's because this isn't told to do anything, you know, it just collides. Obviously, I could make it a trigger collider um, if you wanted it to treat like that. But we'll say, we'll say, um, just a normal collider. Now, um, what do I want to do with that? Well, the thing is, well, I'm clicking the wrong thing, uh, code. So, we could have a projectile script, right? And this is what you don't do. So, you wouldn't do, uh, having like a, uh, maybe you'd have a boolean saying like, um, deals damage, CLS field, private, bool, um, applies damage over time, uh, so, and so on. You, you might have more and more, right? And then you'd also have to have serialized field, um, private float damage, dot duration, dot like data and all this lot. And then obviously you're gonna start getting these projectiles that like, it, it's just stupid, right? Like you then have to write the logic on it on how to treat projectile, but all projectiles are different. You don't want to have to go to each projectile with this one script and have to check boxes and accidentally, oh, forgot that, I need to go change that, you know. Oh, the damage, or oh, this this projectile just hits something and does an effect, it doesn't do damage, and so on. You're going to have different things. And this projectile is just one example. Um, so instead of doing this, where you have, you know, all these different stupid things, we don't really want a, you know, projectile class, to be honest. In reality, you don't want a projectile class. Um, Maybe you do, obviously. There'll be a case where you do. I'm not just going to say you never make a projectile class. But what we want to do is we want to use the component-based uh, architecture where we have different components that handle different things on the same object. So, for example, you might want a script, which you're going to use a lot. The benefit to making scripts, or one of your goals, is to make them as reusable as possible. So, for example, we am going to say uh, destroy on collision. Okay? And all this is just going to say, this destroy and collision, will just be a really short script, and it's going to say um, private void on whoops on collision enter um, destroy game object. Okay, that's all it needs to do. We can even go Control K Control D to simplify that, get rid of the usings we don't need. I mean, you could even go as far to be honest. It's just if this is all the script's doing, why not just bring it down? Mm. Okay, you can have it like that if you really wanted to. And this is just a simple script, right? You've written it, it's done. You never have to touch that ever again. The chances are you're never gonna alter that. And all, all it means is, you know, we're gonna press play now. You look at your projectile prefab, you press play. And you click, you shoot projectile off. It doesn't do anything, right? It just bounce, stop, whatever. So now you're like, alright, I want this this thing, whatever it is, to uh, destroy itself on collision. And so long as I've not done anything silly, it's actually uh, doing it instantly because it's colliding with the player. So, I mean, what you could do is you can make a layer, um, add layer, um, player, and add layer, um, player projectiles and then you can say projectile is of player projectile and this capsule is of type player and if we go to the physics settings we can then say we uh, don't want player projectiles to interfere with uh, player with projectile. there we go we don't want player and player projectiles to collide so that should work there you go so you fire off your uh, projectile hit something gets destroyed right pew 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 with even a uh, they hit themselves so you could even go here and say we don't want player projectiles to hit each other so you could actually have that as well pew 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 pew, pew. okay so that's that's that and then maybe you might want uh this projectile that you've got you might want to build it up a bit more so you might want to write a script uh see so type script uh damage on collision right so you got your damage on collision script so um on here damage on collision you'll just have basically the same thing you'll say um 
throw that void on collision enter. Maybe you want to have it say um, if collision. And we'll say we'll say um, enemy health. Enemy health is equal to collision dot collider dot get component enemy health. So we've got that stored. Then we'll say if enemy health does not equal null to make sure it, the thing we've hit actually has that component. Enemy health dot deal damage, and then you would pass in a damage which would go here. So let's field private float damage or integer. Um, okay, that's that. Control K, Control D, get rid of the useless using statements. Um, stop for a second. Okay, so now I've got a uh, you know damage on. Uh, Projectile. So we got damage on thingy. So if we then went to say, all right, uh, damage on collision, and it does ten damage. Then if I go to the cube and go into debug mode, you'll actually be able to uh, view the health. All right, I need to probably set the max health. So hundred. And we we said uh, that projectile should deal ten damage, right? Or whatever we put it as. I think it's ten. So if I click here and we see health should go down to ten. 90, sorry, I'm in about, goes down by 10. If it hits itself, um, because I would change that physics setting in uh, playtime, I need to actually change it again. But as you see, the health's going down, and it's gone now, so there you go. Um, then, if we just quickly change this outside of physics, change this out, oh, clicked on the wrong thing. Wait, am I being silly? Uh, what have I done differently here? Where's the where's the little like physics changer? Oh, I'm in debug mode. That'll be why. Normal. Get back. Um, play projectiles with each other. Okay, so that's it. You know, to be honest, that's basically the video. I can obviously keep going like a tiny bit more. So obviously, you might want um something else. And the benefit to this is when you make new projectiles, you just have to drag on what you want. So maybe you want this to damage on collision, but you don't want it to destroy on collision for some reason. Maybe you want it to bounce a few times, right? Or you could even make a script for like destroy after a certain amount of bounces, right? So that's gonna that's that'll have dealt damage, but this one won't obviously. Well, actually, no, it will because it's gonna ignore its uh, thingy. So if I sent all these, and then those with force are still gonna go, but the other ones have obviously hit the thing and stopped. There's obviously not enough rebounding force for it to bounce back. Um, but you get the point. Now, um, so obviously you go back to that, you might want to uh, damage on collision. You've got, uh, you want this thing to also be destroyed on collision. And you can just write more, right? So what else might you want to do on collision? So create shop script. Maybe on collision you want to um, spawn a particle effect, right? So um, particles on collision. There might be a better way of naming this or putting them into like a namespace or a group of some sort, but you get the point. So if we go to the projectile and say particles on collision, and then um, we'll say particles on collision, we'll just say we're taking a serialized field um, private game object particle system, and we'll just say private void on I always do that <laughs> on collision enter um, instantiate particle system our transform dot position with our transform dot rotation and that's all this thing will do because um, the particle system can actually handle the, um, the particle system can handle the destroying of itself um, and yet again if that's just a one liner you know you could just if you wanted to, you could put it into one line. I think when you've got something longer than a line, you should have it like this. It looks nicer. I still just prefer this anyway, but it's up to you. So now that we've got that, we can just make, um, go create a, an effects particle system. Obviously you might want to make it a bit smaller. And then maybe you give it a lifetime of one, not looping, and when it stops, it should be destroyed. 
So you go to this particle system and press play. <laughs> oh, it's got a lifetime of uh, a duration of one second, so. Maybe that's it, right? Maybe that's your particle effect when you uh, hit something. You might obviously want it to be a bit more. Um, maybe you want sphere and you want like 100 particles. And then, um, you know, color over lifetime, you want it to be uh, red to um, like a blackish. But then you might want at the end it to be faded out a bit, so you turn down the alpha. But then you might want it to be a bit higher here, so on you, yeah, for your particles, whatever. Um, now you've got like this effect and then you obviously might even want it to be um, the lifetime to be sure I'm not like I mean to be honest it's an explosion so it should just it should be a burst rather than a um, like a hundred with one cycle now it can probably last longer than that there you go, there's your, there's your simple explosion, right? Uh, so I can just put explosion and then I can uh, save this as a prefab, get rid of that and I can say on the um, projectile to spawn it takes in a thing to uh, a particle system so I'll press play. Now when we collide we have our particle system that as you can see in the uh, inspector when it's dealt with it actually disappears the explosion effect goes and obviously they're not going to collide anymore you might want to have a uh, lifetime thing for them but you get the point so we've just put these um, on collision scripts to handle what they're doing so when you make a new thing you might think uh, I don't want this to have particles on so you just don't add it rather than having a write, write a new script where you just don't have that in the end or you have a boolean you can just write the separate components same with damage and same with you know destroying it you can keep writing more for what you need so you might want for applying uh, status effects you might want one for this that and the other I don't know I could sit here for days and just think up of new ones um, obviously I use the system in my game and I'm going to use it more than I already do because it's just you know makes sense um, so yeah I hope this video helps you quite a bit I hope you use this approach if you've got any suggestions for videos obviously leave them in the description in the comments below if you haven't already liked and subscribed it'd mean a lot uh, join the discord if you'd like to and apart from that thanks for watching and goodbye